Alright guys, this might be the most controversial thing I say on this channel, but philosophy can be conveyed through nonfiction writing. I know, right? That's pretty bold of me to say. But okay, all jokes aside, I think it's safe to say that 99.99% of people would agree with this. But what about other mediums? What other ways are there to convey philosophical ideas and questions? Well, the next thing that comes to mind is fictional literature, with authors like Dostoevsky, Kafka, Goethe, and Dr. Seuss. Now, the idea that philosophy can be conveyed through works of fiction is still going to be fairly popular, I would assume. However, I'm also sure that there's some people out there that think philosophy is purely in the realm of non-fiction academic works. I'm not sure how they wrestle with Plato's dialogues, but hey, that's for them to figure out. But I think it's safe to say that less people would consider film as a medium that can convey philosophy. If it's not in the form of a book, then it's not philosophy. For me though, I think film not only is capable of conveying philosophical ideas and questions, but there are elements of film that give this medium an advantage over your standard book form. And yes, we are going to gloss over giving philosophy a specific definition here because many people have tried and many disagreements have broken out. For the purposes of this video, let's just say that one part of philosophy may be pondering ideas and questions that have a substantial impact in your life. Don't think too hard about this, it's just made out of convenience. This video will be split up into two parts. First we're going to look at these unique features of film that make it a great way to convey philosophical ideas. Next, I'm just going to rattle off some examples of directors and their films which I believe fit the definition of a philosophical film. Now without further ado, let's get into it. So let's start off by entertaining the idea that memory recollection is important in the process of learning. I mean, you could technically read Hegel's Phenomenology of Spirit in two days, but... If you can't remember anything about it, then did you really read it? Remembering ideas and letting them actually have an impact on you is what gives ideas power, not just coming across them once and forgetting about them. In this sense, film may actually be superior to books for the purposes of memory recollection. If you have a good cinematographer on your hands, then the images of the film that are associated with the ideas can really leave an impact on you. Consider this shot from the science fiction film Solaris. One idea from that film that I got is that humanity's obsession with space and science fiction might be misplaced, and perhaps it could even lead to us overlooking the beauty found on our own planet. Now I could write that idea down for you, but doesn't this shot seem much more impactful and memorable than ink on paper? But cinematography isn't the only way a film can help with the memory component of learning. A narrative and characters can also help you remember ideas, in that you can connect those ideas to certain characters. Take Max von Sydow's character in The Seventh Seal, a character who represents the struggle and difficulty of religious faith, even when there's a desire to be faithful. We already have seen Plato utilizing characters in his dialogues, but I think Dostoevsky does it best with his characters in The Brother Karamazov representing different outlooks on life. So that's the memory element of film that film as a medium has over books. But I think something should also be said about the completeness of film. Okay, I honestly have no one word to really describe this, so let me just try and explain it. With books, especially long books, you inevitably have to put it down and have breaks. It could sometimes even take years to eventually finish a book. And where you decide to break is going to be unpredictable to the author. So you might break right in the middle of an argument or right after a premise that you mistake for the conclusion, or something else of that sort. The flow of the argument can then be interrupted. With film, however, it's generally expected that you watch it all the way through. Sure, you could take bathroom breaks, but they're inconsequential compared to the breaks you may take when you read a book. With this in mind, the filmmaker has the ability to say what they want to say in one sitting. All those ideas and questions that the film raises comes before you, and then leaves with you after the film is over and then you contemplate those ideas which really stood out to you the most after the film. For example, there's a lot that can be said from Stanley Kubrick's film Eyes Wide Shut, but after watching the whole film, it's the ideas surrounding marriage and infidelity that stuck with me afterwards to think on. Maybe I'm just rambling, but I feel like getting that complete picture, that full experience in one sitting from film, has its benefits over the incremental experience of reading. 
I'm still unsure about this though, so comment below and let me know your thoughts. Okay, so now, if I've hopefully convinced you that film has the possibility and even some advantages to conveying philosophical ideas, I'd now like to bring up some filmmakers whose films are great at accomplishing this, in my opinion. The first director to come to mind is the Swedish filmmaker Ingmar Bergman. As mentioned earlier, his film Seventh Seal is a great look at religious faith. There's also Persona, which talks a little bit about identity, and my personal favorite, Wild Strawberries, which talks about a complete life and what living a regretful life might look like. Now I've only seen two films by Russian filmmaker Andrei Tarkovsky, but they were deep experiences that will stick with you. One of these films is Solaris, which we mentioned earlier which has many themes, one of which is actually personhood. The other film is Stalker, which, like The Seventh Seal, deals with the struggles of religious faith. I should mention that his films are very slow paced and meditative, so watch these films when you're in the right mood. I'll give a quick shout out to the Hong Kong filmmaker Wong Kar Wai, whose filmography deals with a lot of issues on love. My personal favorite is 2046, but watch In the Mood for Love first as the two go together. There's obviously Kubrick who deals with a lot of big ideas, which is probably most prevalent in 2001. But you could also get some good philosophical value out of A Clockwork Orange, Eyes Wide Shut, Paths of Glory, maybe Barry Lyndon, and my personal favorite Dr. Strangelove. The rest of his films are good too, but these films here in my opinion are where the philosophy is really at. Finally, in contrast to Kubrick who deals with big abstract ideas, Richard Linklater is a criminally underrated filmmaker in my opinion who deals a lot with the human experience. In films like Dazed and Confused and Everybody Wants Some, we almost sort of float along with the people doing people things with some philosophy sprinkled in here and there. His Before trilogy and Boyhood do this as well but also play around with time which I think is super cool. So that's just a couple filmmakers that come to mind off the top of my head, and they've all brought some interesting ideas to the table that are fun to play around. Two of my friends even said that Linklater's film Everybody Wants Some has changed their life in some way. I'm curious about what films or filmmakers you would include in this list so comment below. If you enjoyed the video then subscribe, like, hit the bell, and share it with some relative that you don't talk with much. Also, if you really enjoyed this video, and think I should do some video essays on philosophy in certain films, then let me know. And as always friends, I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day.